Hello, Paul Beckwith. So, in the previous video, I was talking about the hydrogen sulfide that comes out of the ocean, gives the rotten egg smell at low concentrations, but is extremely deadly at higher concentrations. So we can detect this stuff when it's as low as one part per million in the atmosphere along coastlines, for example. There's been, uh, so the coastline off southern Africa, southwest Africa, Namibia, has periodic eruptions of hydrogen sulfide, which can kill millions of fish. And, um, you know, there's other coastlines. Uh, often when the ocean conditions are such that the microbial decomposition of plant and animal, you know, carcasses, organic matter, produces hydrogen sulfide, it's, it's, it's dissolved in the water, and often if conditions um, make the shoaling of this water, so this deep water comes up, reacts with oxygen along the coastlines, and produces hydrogen sulfide, the hydrogen sulfide is released to the atmosphere, and people on the coastlines can smell it. So this, is, this has been, this happens, um, can happen from freshwater, um, uh, lakes and things from 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 uh, there's lots of conditions where this can be produced and be detected in low concentrations. So the key the problem is is you know um, can will the oceans become stratified enough and anoxic enough that um, we can get massive amounts of hydrogen sulfide coming up? And this idea this mechanism, if you Google the book under a green sky. It talks about uh, these Canfield oceans, these oceans that are producing huge amounts of hydrogen sulfide and responsible, um, which, which would be responsible for a mass extinction events. So I'm talking about, so let me talk about the situations present day where we can get emissions of hydrogen sulfide from coastlines. Okay, so ocean chemistry changes uh, triggered Earth's greatest extinction event. So this is an article. These are trilobites. Okay, you may have seen the fossils. You know, they're, 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 they're sort of like these little slugs or something. Okay, so 250 million years ago, uh, it was a period of a mass extinction known as the Great Dying. Okay, and the roots are believed to be the intrusion of deadly sulfide-rich waters shoaling, going upwards into oxygenated shallows. The mixing of these waters then could produce hydrogen sulfide in huge quantities and cause a mass extinction. Okay, so um, around, okay, so around 252 million years ago, this end Permian event wiped out nearly all life on Earth in the most devastating extinction event of the planet's history. It's known as the, the mother of all Earth extinctions. More than 80% of marine species disappeared and it took several million years for these ecosystems to recover. Okay, so this is the, um, this is, the continents were locked together here. Um, this was basically, um, so that we had one massive ocean, the Panthalassic Ocean, spanned 70 to 80 percent of the Earth's surface. The land was all bunched together here. Um, this is an area present day called Opal Creek. This is an area in China. Um, present day it's in China. And this is where these locations were located 252 million years ago. So by looking at Looking at fool's gold and, you know, which is, uh, there's, there's sulfur in the rocks. Looking at the isotopes of sulfur, present day, you know, in these regions, we can get information about these regions in the, when they were in this configuration 252 million years ago. So a deep ocean situation and a coastal situation. Okay, by analyzing the isotopes in these pyrites, it was concluded that the main killing agents were brought about by the mixing of sulfide-rich waters from the deep ocean with oxygenated shallow waters. Exactly what caused this increased mixing is still a mystery. Of course, the sulfide is toxic to 
um, cells with nuclei, hydrogen sulfide in the concentrations of a few hundred ppm is lethal to humans if exposed for a prolonged time. So this shoaling would kill marine animals in these oceans and then that spread to the land. Okay, so this is the idea. Okay, so this has important lessons uh, for the present day ocean. Okay, so let's talk, look at this region. Here's a fascinating region in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, the Jacuzzi of Despair is a deadly lake within the Gulf of Mexico. So when you think of a jacuzzi, you think of warm, bubbling, soothing, relaxation, a luxury. But now tweak the scene. And these, if these steamy bubbles were full of methane and that hot, clear water, a thick, briny stew of, uh, you know, hydrogen sulfide and methane, you'd have a jacuzzi of despair. So basically, there's an underwater brine pool in the Gulf of Mexico. It's a toxic pocket of seawater that will certainly kill anything that swims into it. Okay, so basically, it's, a, it's, very, it's about a day's boat ride from the coast of New Orleans. Okay, it's a, hundred, it's a region on the seafloor. It's 100 feet, 30 meters in circumference, reaches about 12 feet deep. And it's nearly 3,300 feet or 1,000 meters below the surface. Okay, so here's the image here. Okay, um, it's about five times saltier than the surrounding seawater. It's very, very dense water, very heavy water as a, re as a result. Okay, so how much salt is in there? Instead of 3.5%, it's about 17-18% salt. Okay, so it's very, very dense, it just sits at the bottom, and there's a toxic cauldron of chemicals, including methane gas and hydrogen sulfide, that are dissolved in this water. Okay, so anything that swims into this water um, just uh, dies almost immediately. So why is it there? Okay, so here's an image here, you know, this is looking down, so this is the very salty water, the, t the, the toxic jacuzzi of despair. Okay, so here's the idea or the thought about why this is here. Millions of years ago, Gulf of Mexico was much shallower than today. As that shallow water evaporated, it left massive layers of salt behind, which slowly were slowly buried under layers of sediment. Okay, as these layers shifted and cracked, the salt got into the ocean water, escaped, created this super concentrated brine bath, doesn't mix with the water. And um, so it's not the only brine that's deadly. In freezing regions, brine icicles known as brinicles, they freeze very, very quickly. They trap aquatic life and are deadly for, for life, okay? So we have this region on the seafloor in the Gulf of Mexico that's saturated with hydrogen sulfide, methane, is extremely salty and just sits there and doesn't mix with the rest of the ocean. Okay, uh, this is another region of interest, Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Okay, there's these sinkholes called cenotes. Limestones collapse to expose the groundwater below. And uh, here's, here's one, and as you go down, you suddenly go down about 30 meters and you see this cloudy region, almost no visibility. Okay, so what is this? It's a toxic, a giant underwater river shrouded in a cloud of toxic gas. So this is a sinkhole at the surface and there's a good video of divers going down to this region. And here's basically what we have. So here's the sinkhole this is fresh water here, down to about 30 meters or 100 feet depth. Beneath you have salt water, very, very salty water, and you've got methane and uh, hydrogen sulfide dissolved in the water, making it milky white. So this is, the, this is some vegetation here poking up, and this is what we see here. And you go down here, like it looks like it's uh, from another world. It's, it's incredible. Okay, so this is a region of course, no life can survive underneath here, 
no, 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 and and they also show the the hot tub or jacuzzi of despair in this article. Okay, so those are kind of extremes where hydrogen sulfide is taking over. Now, I've done previous videos, and we do know that there's regions of the oceans that are becoming more anoxic, and these are called we call these dead zones. The amount of dissolved oxygen is less than five milligrams per uh, liter, something like that. So fish swim in, they don't survive. The only things that can live in these type of environments is jellyfish who have huge surface areas and extract their oxygen through, through their surface areas. So they can live in very, very low oxygen environments. These anoxic environments, they've increased, the number of them have, of these sites has increased more than tenfold since 1950. Okay, as the oceans warm and become more stratified, there's more and more of these anoxic dead zones. And these dead zones are um, eventually the, the bacterial decomposition in these dead zones, of course, is going to be anaerobic, no oxygen. And these are conditions where you can get the hydrogen sulfide produced as well as the methane. Okay, um, so... Coastal, if you're near a coastline and you have this, you can smell this rotten egg smell, what it means for your health, what's causing it. So, um, so here's a case. So, so this, is, um, this is an article from November uh, 21st, 2018. More than 400 complaints about a rotten egg smell poured into the air quality management from September 28th to October 1st, California, stretch of coast from Newport Beach to Redondo Beach. So this odor has, this mysterious odor has intermittently plagued the coast for years. Okay, they're trying to identify the source, etc. I mean, it's coming from the ocean. Most likely hydrogen sulfide, pungent sulfur odor, coming, it's, it's, it's found in oil fields, petroleum operations can arise, but can arise from rotting organic matter, including seaweed, al algae blooms, and dead fish. Mercaptan has a similar odor, and that's added to natural gas to help identify leaks. Okay, but uh, these, th this particular situation, um, you know, the, the winds were coming in from the ocean. They don't think it was natural gas. Um, they think it was just uh, air wafting in from the ocean with hydrogen sulfide. Uh, you know, all you need is one part per million, and that can um, cause these smells along the oceans. You know, if you're in swamps and marshes and things, you can also get that effect. Okay, so some, some, so so obviously off the coastlines of California, you can get this. Um, I talked about the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, same sort of thing. And also the west coast of India has the, the seasonal anoxia where there's fish kills and things and you get the methane and the hydrogen sulfide wafting ashore um, and people um, smelling it. Now, Robert Scribbler did an article called Shades of a Can-Filled Ocean, Hydrogen Sulfide in Organ Oregon's Purple Waves. So there was a situation where and this article was from 2015, a very good article, by the way, from, from uh, the Scribbler. Um, people were seeing these purple uh, waves coming ashore. So when the water gets laced with hydrogen sulfide, you know, it can take on this characteristic color. Okay, so there was, th this is an artist's rendering of what a Canfield ocean may have looked like. So if the whole ocean, you know, under a purple sky, you know, uh, when you have a dead ocean like this, you, you get this purple color. Okay, um, and there's jellyfish that can su survive and so on. So, and this is a paper, I'm not going to go into the details of this, but they looked at the um, isotopes, um, you know, at those two locations here. Um, it's not loading properly. Okay, here we go. They looked at these locations, they looked at the isotopes, they tried to determine, they, 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 they came to the conclusion that a lot of the cause, one of the main causes of this mass extinction back 252 million years ago was sulfide. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the details of it, but it's an excellent paper. So thanks for listening. Hydrogen sulfide, we have to keep an eye on.